I'm Monique Saltani. I'm a wine expert, a journalist, and I'm thirsty for life. This is Wino TV. A toast. A toast to the people. To the people. Cheers. We're culture. Ciao, Mario. So we're here in Taormina. It's absolutely beautiful. It literally takes your breath away. What makes the tuna red? We made our way into the cave, and I'm very excited because it's so cool in here, Frederico. What is happening right now in these caves? We age the traditional method, sparkling wine. And a lot of times in the US, we don't think about sparkling wine when we think about wines from Sicily. In terms of viticulture and enology, uh, Sicily is very complex. So I think that uh, the United States consumer as to better learn what Sicily can give. In agriculture. I recently did an interview with some of the top psalms and I said, what do you think is like your hottest wine right now? What are you super excited about? And they all said wines from Etna. Come together. Now we drink? Sure, it's time. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> Catania City, here we come. Mount Etna looms over Catania, Sicily's second largest city. It's said to have been covered by lava at least 17 times. One look at the ashy color of the streets and the buildings here, and you'll see that Etna is everywhere. Our Sicilian adventure begins in the east. Mount Etna is the largest active volcano in Europe and helps to produce some of Sicily's most sought after wines. Monique, welcome again in Sicily. Oh, ciao, ciao. So right now, you know, we are on the east side of Sicily. Mm -hmm. We climb a mountain. We are on the Etna volcano. I have to show you the treasure of this volcano, our Prophylloxera vineyard. Please follow me. Yes, sir. So I'm sure you know uh, what happened when Philoxera arrived in Europe. Mm -hmm. They completely destroy all the vineyards in the whole Europe, France, Portugal, Spain, and then Italy. But when I ride on the Etna Volcano, Philosera found two things. The first uh, is the volcanic sand. It's a very, very thin sand and make not possible for this insect to spread. And the second is the altitude. So here we have uh, uh, vines that are more or less with uh, 150 years old and were planted before uh, the arrival of the Philosopher in Europe and obviously they are completely rootstockless. So uh, we are very very proud here because uh, uh, we are continuing to grow this kind of vines uh, for history and because it's, a, it's an, an heritage. So please uh, Enter with me, I have to show you this vineyard. You first, please. We are on the edge of ancient lava flows and right smack in the center of pre phylloxera vines. We are at Fidiato Winery's Etna Estate here in the eastern part of Sicily. This vineyard, it's a treasure we have here on the Etna because uh, at the beginning of the 19th century, the phylloxera insect arrived from America to Europe and destroyed all the vines. It's interesting because it's almost like Mount Etna is a blessing and a curse, right? So Etna actually saved these vines because of the soil. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, this is really, really particular because we are in the northeast side of the volcano and here we make uh, uh, mountain viticulture. So it's a completely different kind of viticulture if we compare to the west side of Sicily because there we make a hillside viticulture and little highland marine viticulture. Here it's a completely different kind of vineyard and also here we have uh, native vines that are, that they are completely different. Here we have uh, as a, a red grapes Nerello Mascalese and Nerello Cappuccio and four white grapes Carricante, Catarratto and Minnella. So completely different again. Just to give people an idea at home uh, how, how fertile this soil is, I'm actually wearing plastic bags on my shoes to protect them from this dark soil. Uh, this fertile soil, it translates into the wine. We are talking about uh, very, very young volcanic soil. The, the volcanic soil 
soil, uh, so it's very, very fertile because it's full of minerals. Okay, another important thing, this uh, kind of volcanic uh, soil makes a very, very thin sand and makes possible for the roots of the vines and uh, other fruits to go very, very deep to get uh, the fertilization, the minerals and to not go in hydro stress because they always find some moisture in the soil. So the soil is very fertile and it's ideal to grow grapes here. Another important thing is that this kind of soil during uh, it's really dark and during the summer become very very hot and helps during the, the day and the night to have a very very big differences of temperature bet between the day and the night and this is very good for grapes. And I recently did an interview with some of the top psalms and we were talking about the hottest wines. I said what do you think is like your hottest wine right now? What are you super excited about? And they all said wines from Etna. Why do you think people in the United States are so excited about wines from Etna? By my opinion it's quite simple. They are testing a wine that's come from a production scenario that is absolutely unique. I told you we are making a a viticulture on a mountain but at very low latitude so Etna it's really unique so if someone at home is watching this and they're having a glass of wine from Etna what are some of the characteristics that they would know like hey this wine is definitely from Etna because the wine it's powerful it's complete but at the same time it's very very elegant both the red and the white wine and so Etna is the largest active volcano in Europe are you ever afraid it's going to erupt and lava is going to come flowing down here I'm sure Yes, because uh, I'm, I like to say that on the Etna we are, uh, let's say, as a guest. Because the volcano is uh, very, very active. It's always, quite always lava flowing during the year. And right now we are in the northeast part, but uh, the, uh, the crater, the active crater, right now it's in the southeast part. But tomorrow the volcano can decide also the, to open a new crater here, where we are talking. Yeah, it happened during the centuries. Yeah. Do you have like a lava flow escape plan or I mean, what is the... Yeah, yeah, the government... <laughs> The, the government has a, his own uh, lava flowing escape plan, but uh, for the for the vineyard, uh, let's hope that the volcano decide to remain in this sta this stable situation to let possible for us to continue to protect this vineyard, this Prefiloxia vineyard, and to produce. Uh, high quality wine. This is what I love about you, Federico. You are living on the edge, always. You've got the uh, the other winery in Favignana Island where it's a labor of love, and now here we're, we're living on the edge with the volcano. But I think that it's not possible to make good wine without love and without passion. I agree. So we're in the pre Phylloxera vineyard. Now we've made our way into the cellar, and I'm pretty excited because you've got a real treat for us. Yeah, uh, but uh, I have to first tell you that we had uh, to keep the secret because I don't want our enologists to know that I'm going to let you taste the Prefiloxera wine, okay? Okay, don't worry, we won't tell anyone. No one's going to watch this. Okay, this is a secret. <laughs> Let's go directly from the barrel. Okay. This is a Merello Mascalese, 90%, and a little part of Merello Cappuccio directly from the Prefiloxera vineyard, more than 100 years old, medium age, for you. Oh my gosh, oh, now I'm too scared to try it. No, no. <laughs> and when does this wine go on the market? Because it's not available yet, correct? Yes, right now for this vintage, uh, we are going to put in the market for the April of uh, 2018. We have uh, the previous vintage that is still in bottle, in a gin bottle. Right now, this is the vintage 2015 and is yet in barrel aging. And what made you decide to do this, to make this wine? Uh, it's a, let's say that uh, this wine is a tribute to the Etna tradition of winemaking and vine growing. So it's really important. It's our heritage, this wine. We'll raise our glass to <laughs> Etna. Now we're in the Palmento room. Federico, talk about the historical significance of this room. So this room is very important because during the century, according to the tradition, in this room, uh, usually the farmer will press the grapes. This room, uh, we can date it back to the 17th century, so it's very old. And the press uh, we have uh, that exists below us, uh, it's still fully functional. If you, if you want, after I can show you how were pressed the grapes. So there were two stages of pressing. The first stage of pressing is done by feet, by the farmer. Yeah. After this, they take those grapes and they put under the press for a second pressing. And this tradition uh, is going and going uh, till the, uh, we can say, 
15 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why did they stop doing it? No, because uh, after that uh, we imported uh, the technology. And uh, as you know, to make high quality wines, uh, technology sometimes is needed. How cool is this? We're trying wines from Etna in this historic room where they first started pressing wine back in the 1500s. Absolutely. So uh, we're going to start with uh, this wine. It's called Le Sabbie dell'Etna. And the translation for the consumer of the label is the Etna's sand. Because uh, as I told you, as uh, we show you, the Etna soil is, uh, has uh, this very, very thin sand that characterizes the wine. We can say that uh, on the Etna, uh, the, all the producers were using this kind of press, but right now we have to, we have to introduce uh, technology, uh, but without uh, uh, erasing the tradition. Because the first thing about this uh, Etna wine is the color. It's, very, it's red, but it's uh, very brilliant. And this is what characterizes uh, the Nerello Mascalese, from Nerello Mascalese. At nose, uh, you can feel that it's uh, very fresh, uh, complex, and it's really elegant. You can see the, the red fruits uh, and uh, some, uh, some part of, uh, of skin of lemon, of orange, uh, but remain really, really elegant. In your mouth, you, you will feel a very good uh, tannin texture that makes the wine uh, with a good body but remains elegant and it's very, very long lasting. Just open up a bottle and you're transported to Etna, right? Sure. <laughs> Cheers. Travelers from around the world come here to Terramina to soak up the sun and get a taste of the Sicilian sweet life. It's absolutely beautiful. It literally takes your breath away. Very popular tourist town and I can see why. Absolutely. Uh, Taormina is one of the most famous tourist hotspots in Sicily and why not in the world Europe. Since the 17th century was part of the Grand Tour. Grand Tour was a, a, a tour made by noble rich people through well, the world Europe and they arrived in Sicily in Taormina. Now we just left the ancient Greek theater. We can date back the third century before Christ. So here you have uh, history, you have a lot of uh, beautiful landscape, but what's really important, Taormina is very close to the Etna volcano. So by tourist purpose, Taormina and Etna are quite the same thing. Just mean Zibibo, please. Sure. Zibibo is a, an aromatic vine. At nose, uh, you can feel the aromas of Zibibo. Uh, so you can feel the, uh, the skin of the orange, uh, peach, uh, and uh, a lot of uh, really, really aromatic and interesting aromas. A toast. A toast to Zibibo. To Zibibo. We are sitting back a seaside at Grand Hotel Timeo, literally giving you a taste of La Dolce Vita. Tonno rosso di Favignana, su una panur croccante di quinoa, zucchine e salsa all'arancia. Buon appetito. Grazie. Le sabbie rosse dell'Etna, Etna rosso. So, Monique, now we are tasting a red wine with a fish looks like a little bit particular because uh, but is no so particular because uh, red tuna is considered red meat okay it is yeah i did not and, know this and uh, this red wine comes from the etna volcano and as i told you it's uh, more than 90 percent of nerello mascalese and a little part of nerello cappuccio no nerello mascalese is well known because his tannins are so roundy and so elegant so again uh, i think by my opinion that it's a perfect pairing with red tuna and what makes the tuna red? 
uh, the hormones because uh, during the reproduction period the bluefin tuna enters the Mediterranean Sea and only in that period the, uh, the meat will uh, switch the color to red and it's considered the red tuna. It's, uh, it's considered the best tuna meat all over the world maybe. You're sort of my go-to guy about everything Sicily because I could literally ask you any question and you know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> because I like to eat and to drink. Yeah, do you like to eat and drink in Sicily? <laughs> Let's enjoy Yeah, I'll drink to that. If there's something about this area, this part of Sicily that people don't know that you think they should know, what, what would it be? Some sort of insider I, info. I think that the best thing for people is to come here and visit Sicily. Not because uh, there is something that I want to, to say, but uh, only visiting Sicily and this part of Sicily uh, will, will be the best thing for, uh, for tourists. So everyone's welcome to come to your uh, resort and we're all going to come and they're going to look for you and they're going to sit down and do a food and wine pairing with you, right? You'll give them all this good info? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for being here again uh, and see you next time. Yes, you can't get rid of me.